I'm just glad to be here on Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Sorry about the roads, but you know, we, we need to just thank God because we're going to get a brand new road on 45th Street. All four lanes are going to be brand new, and then we're going to get a brand new road right here beside the church, Margot Lane. We just ought to thank God for that. So if we, if we just, if we complained at all tonight about how long did it take in the first lane and how long it get here, let me just encourage you, something new is happening. And people are still coming in, and we know that the delays and the, and the traffic as people are coming in and they're going to come in. Let me just tell you what's going to happen tonight. Tonight we are going to anoint administrators, teachers, people affiliated as far as leadership in schools. We're also going to pray for all of our students all the way down to uh, kindergarten tonight. We're going to anoint them. We're going to anoint our teenagers. And we are going to believe that God is going to protect not only them, but their schools, their environments. Also tonight begins, everybody here, help me a little bit. Everybody here, I want you to take it upon to be a missionary to schools, everybody. This is what I want you to do. We do this every year and it may be the same school. Wherever you live, what is the closest school to your neighborhood? Whether it be a daycare center, whether it be a college, whether it be a high school or a grade school, an elementary school, and everybody, everybody, I want everybody, I want sons, daughters, everybody to take up on the responsibility of saying, I'm going to pray for a school. And here's what I want you to do. In the next four weeks, we want to accumulate all of the schools. And here's what we want you to do. We want you to pick out the school or get the school or the school near you. And what I want you to do is to go up to that school. Don't be ashamed. It could be after hours, before hours. You don't have to go in the school. In fact, I suggest you don't go in the school because we don't want to put anybody on the spot in case the prayer seems to be offensive. But go up there and put your hand on the school. Put your hand on the school somewhere up on the building and pray three prayers. You say, Lord, protect this school. Let there be no shootings in this school. And Lord, let God the violence be in and under control by the power of the Holy Spirit. So you're praying for no shootings. Number two, you just, just, it only takes a moment to pray for the school. Lord, let angels come into this school. Let angels be at these doors. Let angels be in these hallways and on the field, the football field, the basketball courts. And number three, number three, pray that every student that goes to this school, that they will be protected by the power of God. So it's three prayers. So I put my hand up on the school and I pray, oh God, there be no shootings. Then I pray that there'll be angels in the school. Then I pray that the Holy Spirit will be upon the students and we should add the teachers and the principals. When you do that, everybody, everybody, I want everybody to claim that you got a school, you did this too, in the next four weeks and especially in the next two weeks so that we start accumulating the list of, of, of schools. After you do that, you, you will turn in the name of the school. You can go on our website, but you can turn it in to the receptionist. Turn in the name of the school. And uh, if you could, put the address of the school. Then what's going to happen is our offices, I'm going to send a letter to that school. I'm going to tell them that you prayed for that school. I'm going to address it to the principal of the school, and we're going to tell that school principal, we have prayed for your school that there'll be no shootings. We pray for this school for your teachers and your students, and we have prayed that angelic beings would be charged over your school. Last year, we did that to 917 schools, Illinois, Indiana. They can be a Christian school. They can be a public school. They can be a charter school. I need you, everybody, make a commitment. Make a commitment. Make a commitment that you take the responsibility. Don't be ashamed. Your prayer could very easily, and I will say it will, stop the enemy from doing something crazy in that school. Did you know that all the schools that we prayed for in the last few years have never had an outbreak of shooting? And did you know that we have had all good reports from colleges to high schools to um, grade schools to charter schools to Christian schools to daycare centers, everybody, 
everybody, not just a few, not just the elders, everybody. Turn yourselves into missionaries. Turn yourselves into protectors. Protectors. Everybody say protectors. Protecting through prayer, believing God. You're going to hear me emphasize this, service after service. Get involved. I've never done anything like that. Well, good. Do something. Put on the armor of God. Go out there and do some warfare and, and say, Lord, we're going to ask you to protect this school. So tonight's going to be a wonderful night. And when we get to that point tonight and the worship team will come back, we're going to bring the teenagers. And then you're going to see all the grades from kindergarten all the way up to up to middle school and you're going to see all the teenagers and before they come in we're going to pray for all of the administrators and all the teachers that are here tonight and we're going to believe that God is going to protect our students and he will I promise you he will amen uh, let me show you what's happening and next year um, we're going to do a better job we're going to do a better job in really promoting to you about our um they are calling them uh, they are calling them workshops and these workshops are workshops of dance and uh, audio and, and technical and learning to act and learning um, uh, music music being taught music and uh, and I'm missing all the classes but one of our students one of our students who is in the audio visual there, we have classes for that. That's going on daily, and uh, be going this week. And uh, and today, I was uh, ple I was very pleased when they showed me their work. And um, and so in the audio visual, that means your students or your children will come and they learn. They learn about audio visual, learn about lighting, learn about how to edit, learn how to do television learn how to do radio all of that is being learned in our classes that they're enrolled in and i'm expecting next year to be just gigantic of two or three hundred students so this will this will excite you because what this is doing is it's training our children our grandchildren to do something in life that gets in the taste of acting and how to act and uh, I'll just give you a few pointers. What's downstage? All of you, what's downstage? What's upstage? What's stage left? What's stage right? All of those are terms in which when you get on stage and, and understanding that you don't turn your back to the audience when you're acting. So it builds their confidence. It builds their level of awareness. It builds their acting skills. So here is a student here is a student just in the last few days, and I understand she woke up, she woke up, I think, yesterday morning, day before yesterday, and she woke up at 2.30 in the morning, she got inspired, she took her computer out, she took what's happening here on the campus in these daily workshops with our young people, and this is what not only she learned, but what she put together, and see if this don't impress you. I'm going to show you two videos. Watch this.
to that creator. I don't know where she is, but let me tell you, that was created. She did all of that, and, and she put all of that together, and that is what's happening. Aren't you glad you go to a church that's putting good things into a younger generation? For a few minutes, I'm going to teach before we take the offering, and then we're going to pray for all of our students. But if you have your books tonight, this is uh, Summer Sizzles last night. We're going to go out. We're going to have a lot of fun after we anoint all the children. I want you to turn to page 251. 251 in the, I believe, Bigger, Better, Bolder Blessings. And on 251, we're going to begin our reading in Genesis 12, 2. Now, if you don't have this book, let me, in, let me include you. Get this book. It's not very much. Each page is filled full of scriptures. And each, each book of bigger and, and, and better, bolder blessings is subject in title form so that whatever you're going through or whatever you need, you can pick it up and you can read it. Have it next to your bed. Have it on your coffee table. Keep it with your Bible. This is a great, great book. Genesis 12, 2, I will make you a great nation. Say it with me, I will make you a great nation. When you see or hear or look at the Bible and it says nation, it means people. I will make you a great people. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I want everyone to note what God is saying here. God is directly speaking here and he's talking to the one that he picked, which was Abraham in this case, and all of you that have been born again, this is the same words that God would speak to you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. Everybody tell me your last name. Muncie, Muncie, come on, shout out your last name. Muncie, I'm going to make your name great. That means that your name's going to go beyond where it is today. You shall be a blessing. This is God. This is God saying, I'm going to make a great people out of you, out of your children, out of your children's children, out of, out of you 50 years from now, 60 years from now, 100 years from now. If the Lord tarries 200 years from now, your nation, your seed is going to be blessed and your name is going to be great. Not only is it going to be great now, but it's going to be great in the future. Now, there's a hesitancy possibly within people here that are listening to this and saying, well, my name is not very great. That's because you can't make it great. But when God says, I'm going to make your name great, your name is going to become popular. Your name is going to become something that people are going to hear about. And you're probably wondering, how is that going to happen? Because I don't have this. I don't have that. I haven't achieved this. I'm not achieved that. If God says, I'm going to bless you and make your name great and says, you're going to be a blessing, what does that mean? That means you're going to have more than enough so you can share with other people, that you're going to bless other people. You're going to be able to give to other people. You're going to be able to say, here, I want to give you this. We ought to get in the practice after we pay our cars off to give our cars away so God can bless us with a new one. We have maybe not reached, maybe we have not reached that element of faith, but we should start thinking like that. Who can we bless? There's a widow. There's a person who doesn't have a husband. There's a person that needs help. How can I buy a house for them? Or how can I give them a house? Think about the fact. I can't wait to the day I can give a house away. I can't wait to the day I can give a car away. In, in most of my uh, uh, business dealings, I lease a car, so I don't really own it. I lease a car for a period of time, and then I give it back. But I can tell you this, there is nothing like giving a car away. I want to do that. You say, have you done that? I've done that in the past. I've given a car away. I remember uh, after, after a season, a car that we owned, and uh, I then said, I'm going to give that car away. I saw a young man in this church, and I said, you know, he doesn't have a car. And I asked him, does he have a car? He said, no. So I gave him a car. I gave him a car. Many of you are saying, well, who is that? That's no big deal. It was Rashawn. Rashawn did not have a car because he didn't have any way of getting around. So I gave him one. Have you ever given a car away? Have you ever given $100 away and never asked anybody or $50 away? Have you ever said, here, I'm going to pay for your meal. 
Last night we were celebrating Malachi's birthday and there was somebody, I think they came to our church, I'm not sure, they sure smiled at me and, and acted like that I was their pastor. If they didn't, then smile at me and then I'll think you're, I'm your pastor. And so I went over and found out that they had a 25th anniversary. And so I gave them some money toward their meal simply because I had it to bless. Have you done that? Have you ever done that? No, I'm not going to do that. Then you know what? You'll never be blessed because God won't bless you until you make up in your mind you're going to be a blessing to someone else. I want to bless someone. I want to give money to someone. I want to give food to someone. I want to do something that I've never done. In you in life, think about it in your life. What have you done in your life? If all of you died in the next 30 seconds and you go before the judgment seat of Christ, could God say, I'm really proud of you. I gave you this, I gave you that, and then you did this and you did that. Take, a, take an examination of your life. What have I done in being a blessing to someone else? You have to think about that. And then make goals in your life. You can't do it all at once. I can't do it all at once. And it may be at the end of my life that I'm going to be able to do some things. But I'm going to be a blessing. Let's go back to that scripture verse. Let's go back to that scripture verse in uh, Genesis 12. I will make you a great nation. God says, I'm going to make you a great nation. When he, when he says that, he's talking about your name, your family. And out of you is going to come many, many people out of your out of your. Uh, your, your sons and your daughters and your grandsons and their great, great grandsons, etc., etc. I will bless you and I will make your name great. And then God says, I will, I will, and you shall, not maybe, but you shall be a blessing. If you can't give to somebody, you're probably not blessed. But when God blesses you, you will have more than enough. That's on page 251 in Bigger and Bold. Now, the next verse there, the next verse says in Genesis twenty-two seventeen 17, that in blessings I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, as the sands in which upon the seashore, and the seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. Now, he's talking to Abraham. Abraham did not see all of the seeds that God was referring to. God says, I'm going to bless you, Abraham, especially when Abraham did not have his first son until he was 100 years of age. And so Abraham only lived to, I think, about 160. So he wasn't able to see, he wasn't able to see this promise that God said, I'm going to bless your seed and it's going to be numerically as many as the stars in the heaven and it's going to be like the grains of the sands of the sea that's how many children you're going to have. And when we begin to think about that, we begin to say, wow, that's a lot. Well, God is still continually adding to Abraham. I always, I always, when I meet Jewish people, I say, oh, your daddy is Abraham and your cousin is Jesus. Wow, it's so good to meet you and you're blessed and highly favored. And they'll look at me at first and, and they'll wonder and, and say, why do you say that? Because you're Jewish. You are the seed of Abraham. You're going to be blessed because God already said every child that is born under the Jewish bloodline, I'm going to bless. And most Jews are highly blessed and highly favored and they're good in business and they know how to make money and most of them are blessed. Why? Because when God says, I'm going to bless you and your seed, he means it. So get ready, everybody. You're going to be blessed. Let's talk about, let's talk about the next verse. And I would, like to, I would like to encourage you on this because of what we're doing tonight. Genesis 39. I'd like to start reading it. I've got Genesis 39 and 5 there. In, in page 251, but I want to go to the scriptures and read from Genesis. I want to read from Genesis, the 39th chapter, and I want to begin to read the first verse. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. Let's talk about who Joseph is. Joseph was one of, of Jacob's children. Now, Jacob had 12 sons, and Joseph was the 10th one born. 
Now Joseph had several wives, and one of the wives was named Rachel. Now that's the one that he loved, and anybody that reads the Bible knows that his father-in-law, when proposing to Rachel, he wanted to marry her, and the father-in-law said for seven and a half years, or excuse me, for seven years, if you'll work for Rachel, you can marry her. And then it came that seven years was up, and, 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 uh, and he says, I'm, I'm ready to get married. I've worked for you for seven years. And he said, no, you're going to have to work another seven years if you want Rachel. So his father was a cheater. His father was a manipulator, or excuse me, father-in-law was a manipulator, and his father-in-law was a very, very, very uh, unruly, unfaithful, and he was not honest with his dealings with Jacob. In fact, Jacob says, my father-in-law has cheated me 10 times in the 20 years that I've been around him. Now, he was sent there, Jacob was sent there because, you know, he got in trouble with his brother Esau. His brother Esau was his twin. You know, Abraham, Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and then there was Jacob. There was Abraham, Isaac, and then Isaac had twins, which was Jacob and Esau. And Jacob was the one that took the birthright of his brother Esau, who was born before him, but ended up with the blessing, and his father blessed him. Then Jacob, we find, had to run for his life because his brother Esau, which was very was an athlete, was a warrior, was a hunter, said, I'm going to kill him. So his mother, Rebecca, that was Isaac's wife's name, Rebecca, you know, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca. Rebecca told Jacob, you better go to my brother. And it's 400 miles away and he'll protect you and your brother will not kill you. Well, unbeknownst to Jacob, that when he went there, he fell in love with Rachel, which was his uncle's daughter. And he fell in love with her, and he said, I want to marry her. Laban said, work for me seven years. He did, and then he said, you'll have to work another seven years. So now 14 years, he works for Rachel. And then when he starts to marry Rachel, and in those days, they wrapped up the brides from uh, top of their heads to the soles of their feet, and it was customary you did not see the bride when matrimony went on and you were married. It was not until you got to Motel 6 or whatever the Canvas Hotel was and that, you know, there was the, there was the honeymoon experience of then unwrapping herself and there that was your bride that you married. But in this case, when he got her back to Motel 6 and she took off all of her wrappings, it wasn't Rachel it was her sister, Leah. And of course, that happened, that, happened, uh, that happened after the first seven years that he worked for Rachel. And he goes madly, furiously upset to his father-in-law, Laban. That was his name, Laban. And said, look, you cheated me. I did not work for Leah. The Bible says she was cross-eyed, meaning she was not a very good-looking woman. And it's a fact. You can read it for yourself. And, um, and so Jacob says, I did not work for her. And maybe Jacob got a little plain. She's ugly. I don't want her. Uh, and, and, and if I wanted her, I would have dated her. And Laban said, I'm sorry. I can't get anybody to marry her. So she's got to get married first before Rachel. That's how he got stuck with his first wife, Leah. And, and a point to consider here is that Leah was never loved by Jacob. Jacob never loved Leah. And, and so seven and a half years later, he marries Rachel. Jacob really, loves, Jacob really loves Rachel. But between the two, between the two, Rachel and Leah, you will discover that Leah really loved God and Rachel didn't. Be careful what you go after. Be careful, I've got to have him. I've got... I just got to have him. I mean, I just got to marry him. He's got, he's got money. He's got, better, you better be careful because does he love God or does she love God? And we as parents had better be careful. Maybe we ought to go back to old times custom that the parents negotiate the marriage. Oh, you don't like that, do you? Before we got Americanized, usually the parents chose 
the wife for the husband or for the son or the son for uh, the daughter. In other words, there was a time, this has only been the last 100 or 200 years that we have been able, all of us here, been able to choose. But, but still in the third world, you, you, you'll find parents that they will sell their daughter to someone of another parent that says, I think your daughter fits my son and then the son then has to pay, or their parents have to pay a certain amount of money. I was in Africa uh, preaching uh, a conference when the preacher's son asked me if I would help marry them during the conference. And I said, oh, I'd be glad to. I was highly honored. And so his father and, and, uh, the, and, and, he, and the beautiful bride, I married them along with both fathers who were ministers. At the uh, wedding reception, we were talking and, uh, and the son said, you know, I had to pay $80,000 for my wife because the parents required 80, that was the price of you marrying the daughter and his parents had negotiate with her parents and that's how the marriage got together. Now, I have one, two, three, and four women in my house. And all of them are worth a million bucks. If I could just find four millionaires. In this case, Rachel did not love God, and you'll find that Rachel, Rachel was really a hypocrite. R Rachel never yielded to Jacob's God. Leah did. She, even though that she was despised by Jacob, it was the fourth child in which she had four sons for Jacob, which are the four sons of the 12 that Jacob had, the first four sons, first one being Reuben. And so the Bible says by the fourth child, Leah said, I know he's never going to love me, so I'm going to praise God the rest of my life regardless if he loves me or not. And she named the fourth child Judah, which means praise. And guess what? Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. Praise. So now Rachel, he loves Rachel, and he has, and now she finally gets pregnant. And there's a big story about that because Rachel couldn't get pregnant. She was very jealous of Leah and she couldn't get pregnant. Finally, she got pregnant, and she gave birth to Joseph. And then, of course, she gave birth to Benjamin, which uh, she named him Benaiah. And the, 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 when she named him Benaiah, because Jacob changed the boy's name from Benaiah to Benjamin, because Benaiah means I have secretly served God. And while she was giving birth to that child, she's the one that said, the child should be named Benaiah, and she died. She was giving a confession to Jacob, I have served other gods secretly. But Jacob then changed his name from Benaiah to Benjamin and crowned him, and every king in the Old Testament came from the tribe of Benjamin. From the tribe of Benjamin. So you see the bloodline as it's going through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But now, let's see what happens to Joseph. The Bible says that Joseph is blessed by Jacob. And I want to say to everybody, as we read here, and the Lord was with Joseph, second verse, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of the master of Egyptian. Now let me just tell you what's happening because we're going to fast track here. We're going to find out that Jacob or excuse me, yes, Jacob, he, he, he blesses Joseph. And the other boys are very jealous of Joseph. And Jacob makes a coat of many colors to give to Joseph. His brothers, his blood brothers, all ten, go into, they go into negotiation, especially the four older brothers, they go into negotiations to kill Joseph because he is the dreamer. I want to say to everybody, when you are blessed, get ready for persecution. You must understand that people will be jealous, people will talk about you, 
People will backbite, people will steal from you, and people will take advantage of you, and people will lie on you. So when you are blessed, get ready for persecution. Jesus said these words. He says, I will bless you in houses, plural. He says, I will bless you in lands, plural. He says, I will bless you. He, he talks about, Jesus says, I'll give you a hundredfold. Whatever you give me in the kingdom, I will bless you a hundred times more. Now think about that. Every offering you give, every hand clap, every time you come to church, all of you, you will be blessed a hundred times more for coming to the kingdom tonight. People don't think church attendance is important. Let me tell you, you're blessed when you come. And you're blessed in your health. You're blessed in your eyes. You're blessed in your ears. You're blessed in things you don't even know about. Your light bulbs last longer. Your, your washing machine lasts longer. Your car gasoline goes further than the next person. And there's all kinds of ways in which God blesses you. And, and, and Jesus said these words, when you give to the kingdom, because Peter was complaining, Lord, we left everything. I left my family, I left everything. Here I'm following you. And Jesus turned around and almost rebuked Peter. Hey, Peter, let me tell you, when you follow me, you're following the kingdom. And let me tell you something, Peter, anybody that comes to the kingdom, anybody that gets saved, anybody that gives money, anybody that participates in any way, I'm going to bless them a hundredfold. And Jesus then says, I will bless you in houses and lands, money, hundredfold. But listen to what Jesus says. He said, when I bless you, there will be persecution. And one persecution is, is that when all of you start making a lot of money, guess what? You got to have lawyers to protect you. See, there's not many of you making much money. See, there I caught you. Because when you make a lot of money, you got to find out about all the tax breaks. And you gotta fi you got to hire more accountants. And the more money you make, the more stuff you have, and the more stuff you got to keep up. And it's always persecuting. Everybody wants a big house. Everybody wants a new house. Well, let me tell you, when the honeymoon is over with after four weeks, you're going to find out there are leaks, the toilet stops, the water gets a leak, all kinds of things happen. And you say, oh, I wanted this house. You got to mow the lawn. You got to pull the weeds. You got to do this. And you start shaking your head and say, oh, my God, why didn't know what? No, no, no. You ask God for the house, but there is persecution that comes with it. So blessings is full of persecution. Don't complain about it. Here's the alternative, poverty. Persecution or poverty. I'm choosing persecution. I'm choosing persecution. I don't want the poverty. So Joseph is now blessed, and watch what happens here. Joseph is now blessed. His brothers want to kill him. They put him in a pit. Midianites come along, look at a man, young man down in the pit. His brothers go to the father and, and, and take his coat, and they dip it in blood and say, he's dead. An animal got a hold of Joseph. When they went back to the pit, when you read in Genesis, Joseph was gone. That's interesting. That's interesting in itself. But the Midianites came and saw a young man in, in the pit, and he was all tied up, and they took him, and they took him to Egypt. Then these Midianites sold him. Here's Joseph that God has said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you, Joseph. And he says, everybody's going to bow down to you, and you're going to be rich. And he told about his dream. But now look where he's at. He's being sold like a slave. Then he ends up in Potiphar's place, which Potiphar simply means he is the one that commits or is in charge of capital punishment for all of Egypt and for, uh, for um, uh, the Pharaoh of Egypt, which was the largest empire of its time. This man was a very powerful man, and he bought Joseph, brought Joseph in his house, and he starts working him as a slave. And listen to what he says. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And, and he was in the house of the master of Egyptians. So I'm going to say this. I'm gonna, we're going to get right to the point here, but I want to tell you something here. Listen to this. Even when it's not working out for you, even when you're going through heck, even though things are just not working out, God still will put his spirit of prosperity upon you. 
And Joseph did not know why he was a slave, and he was a prosperous man. God prospered him even when it was bad. And he was in the house of his master in Egypt, the Potiphar. And the Bible says, this is an, and his master, now watch this, his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. You may not like the job, you may not like where you live, you may not like your circumstances, but when God blesses you, things will happen in your circumstances that people will say, you, 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 you're some kind of blessing. The next verse says, Give me a little music here. And Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and made him overseer of his house. Let me say this to everybody. Quit complaining about your boss and your job. Do it like you're doing it unto the Lord. Let a blessing come upon you and you will find that you will be elevated and you will have favor. And even Potiphar says, I'm gonna put him over all my house. He's incredible. Here's a slave. He, he, he said, I know the Lord is with him. And all that he had, he put in his hand. He was, he was good. And the next verse says, and this is what I want you to seek. And it came to pass that from that time that he made him an overseer of his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field, listen to this. All of you need to know that you are a blessing where you live. People may not know it, but because you live on that block, in that house, in that community, there is less violence. The grass grows better on your street. There is less accidents. People may not recognize it, but they'll finally get it someday because you are blessed everywhere you go whatever you do people are blessed tonight in the next few minutes we're going to anoint students and teachers we're going to do that every teacher every administrator anyone works at school from school cafeteria whatever you are a blessing people may not know it but when you walk in there you're a blessing when I walk into Whole Foods, that's kind of my favorite store, and I, and I like to go through the Whole Foods. I like to go to Menards and Whole Foods. Usually I don't get very far. Usually I minister by the third aisle. Somebody stops me and we start ministering and praying. It's true. But you know what? Everywhere I work, everywhere I go, I know I'm blessed and there's blessings. Everywhere you go, you are a blessing. There is favor upon you. Quit thinking, no, no, that's not me. No, no, it is you. And wherever you go, and the Bible says that when, when Joseph was in a position, he didn't even like it. The Bible says that he blessed the field. He blessed people that should not even been blessed. He blessed people. On my block, everybody on my block is blessed. I got my neighbors here tonight. Now that's double portion upon our block. Our block is a peaceful block. Our block is going to be an incredible block. Our block, why? Because you are the light. You are the soul. You are blessing everywhere you go. Everybody say, I'm a blessing. You need to know that wherever you work, you say, I don't like where I'm working. It's all right. You're still going to be a blessing. God is going to show favor. And all hell broke out with Joseph in the very place that he didn't want to be. But he blessed all of them. He blessed the Potiphar. In fact, the Potiphar was so, he was so moved by Joseph that Potiphar just took off weeks and left him with the whole household, with all of his slaves, with all of his money, with his family, his wife. He trusted Joseph. And the Bible says that his wife went after Joseph and she tried to rape him. And Joseph ran, he ran and she kept his cloak. Now watch this, this is very interesting. And the Bible says that, the Bible says that, that when the Potiphar came back, he put Joseph in prison. But under the Egyptian law, anybody that messes with a wife or is caught in adultery, 
should be killed. And he was, he was the master and the Potiphar of Egypt of capital punishment. He should have killed Joseph. But you know what? He knew about his wife. Huh? He also knew the character of Joseph. But he also knew the character of his wife. This is not the first time she messed around. This is not the first time she was playing around on him when he was out of town. And that's the reason why Joseph's life was spared. But he was blessed. So that when the temptation came, he could rise above it. Tonight, before we pray, and we anoint all of these students and anoint all of you that are, that are in any kind of school activity, driving a bus, whatever, you are going to be highly anointed and you're going to make that school function. You're going to make wherever you go function. Listen tonight, and we're going to get ready to give here. This is the time we're going to give our offering. The kingdom, the kingdom of God is so important. All of you are so important. If it wasn't for us, everybody say me. Say born again, born again. If it wasn't for you, the world would have already blown up. But the only reason why the world is not blown up is because of us. We're the salt of the earth. We're the light of the world. And the reason why more things don't happen than what they do, and there's always bad things that happen, is because you are highly blessed. How many is glad that God has blessed you and is going to bless you? Tonight, let's give. Let's give. The kingdom needs money. I just want you to know, everybody look up at these lights. Nipsco in Northwest Indiana does not give us free lights because we're a church. Do you know that? The air condition doesn't run free. The kingdom needs money. The kingdom needs to expand. And God says, if you help my kingdom, if you seek my kingdom first, if you give to it, I will bless you and bless you. Anybody want a big blessing? Take an envelope, take an envelope. If you don't have an envelope, and take a phone. Many of you are so acquainted to do this by phone. And right now, ushers, go forth. Go forth. Sing a little bit as we take this offering and get ready to pray. Everybody in the building, we're going to now give of our offering. And all of you that are watching, you do that right now so that the blessings of God can come upon you. And as the bucket is being passed by, you that have phones, touch, touch the container. Lift your offering unto the Lord as we give on this wonderful Wednesday night of the kingdom so that we might be blessed.
Thank you. Microphone went out. Everybody stretch your hands toward the stretch your hands toward the offering. Say, oh God. Oh God. I want to be a blessing. I want to be a blessing. Because you bless me. Because you bless me. I want favor, Lord. I want favor. I want a hundred times more. I want a hundred times more. Everybody keep your hands stretched. One night, one night, it's in the future. One night, we're going to count the offering, and they're going to come to me and say, one million dollars was given tonight by somebody. Well, don't get excited. You don't want to get excited about that. Because evidently, you don't want to be the one that has to give it. But I'm believing for that. I'm believing that one night somebody's going to give $50,000. Somebody's going to give $3.5 million. Because the kingdom, you, you have, if, you, if we're going to affect the world, we've got to have money so the kingdom can be strong. And the guarantee of the kingdom is, is that God blesses you a hundredfold. The bank can't do that. 401ks can't do that. But God can. So everybody say, thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. That we can give. That we can give. That our kingdom, that our, kingdom our church, our church can, be strong can be strong in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'd like for the elders to take their positions. I'd like for all of you praisers to move directly back. Because in a moment, students will be coming across. I'd like to sing a worship song. Do we have a song? And in just a moment, Beth, the kids are all lined up. They're going to come in front of you, but I need you to sing there. If you all will get close together. And right now, as we begin to have a worship song, because this, this is going to be very important, we are now going to mark our children, our administrators, our young people. So right now, I would like for all of you that work in school, charter, private, daycare, Whatever you do, cook for a school, you're a teacher, whatever. As they begin, as they begin to worship, come, we're going to anoint you with oil and you're going to be prayed for first. Come from all over the building. If you are someone working in schools, come and let us anoint you. Thank you, Jesus. Here they come. Here they come. Father, in the name of Jesus, we anoint them. We anoint these teachers. We anoint them to have faith. We anoint them. We anoint them. We anoint them. They say this chase will never break. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody just pray. Everybody just say, Lord, anoint them. Everybody anoint them. Everybody pray, Lord, anoint them. Lord, touch them. Touch the administrators, touch the principals. We're still coming down that balcony. Let's keep praying, Father, and Lord, these are the chosen ones of our school. Lord, all of those in administration, all of those bus drivers, all of those, they're still coming down the balcony. Anoint them. Anoint them. We mark them. You're going to bless them. Bless them in their school activity. I'd like for all of the college, all of the college students, all students come right now. All students. We're starting to anoint the children. Here they are. We're anointing them right now. All teenagers. Just stay right down here. College students, just stay right here. Father, we anoint every child. We anoint every student. We anoint them right now in the name of Jesus. Every child from bullets. Come right over here, young people. Oh, yes. Touch the children. Touch the children, touch the children, anoint them, 
protecting from bullets, pedophiles, drug dealers. Touch them, heal them in the name of Jesus. Right over here on this side. All students, come, come, come. students in the auditorium to come back and stand at the altar please all students come back college students all of you young people on the west side come right this way come right this way spread all the way across all the way across and when you get in position if you have not been anointed that's it just keep coming across quiet just move in position thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Look at all of these students, my goodness. Keep moving that way. Now, just stop, just stop. Just stay right where you are. I know we're real crowded over there. Just, I guess you guys keep coming this way. I didn't know we was gonna have this many. I've never seen this many before, my Lord. Guys, we're gonna, all of you over here, everybody look at me. All of you here kind of move this way. Just everybody kind of squeeze in. Go up the middle aisle. Go up the middle aisle if you have to. You, you students, go right up the middle aisle. Come this way. That's it. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's crowded. Come closer. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. All students, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. It's good. Everybody standing in the building. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And all those children were anointed. In the name of Jesus, there will be no bullet that will strike these students. There will be no rape there will be no pedophiles in the name of Jesus they will be blessed every one of you students if you have not got oil on your head lift your hand the minute you get oil on your head you can put your hand down elders start moving with the hands are up start moving with the hands are up there's hands over there keep your hands up till you get anointed in the name of Jesus in the name, just sing it now, sing it now, sing it now. Come on, everybody, let's worship. He is with you, he is with you. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you. All around you and within you, he is with you, he is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your calling and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, he is for you, he is for you, he is for you, be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children. Their children, and their children, may His presence go before you, and behind you, and beside you, all around you, and within you. He is with you, He is with you, in the morning, in the evening, in your calling, and your going, in your weeping, and rejoicing. He is for you, He is for you. Every student and every person and everybody in the auditorium and everybody is watching me. Put your hand on your heart and say these words, oh God. Oh God. I receive. I receive the blessing. The blessings. I receive the anointing. I receive the anointing. 
I receive the protection. I receive the protection. When Jacob was blessing his Joseph's children, when Jacob was old, he said something when he prayed like I'm praying. He said, I bless Ephraim and I bless Manasseh. That was Joseph's two children. He said something that I read today that I never caught in all of my Bible years. I'd like for us to go back to that song we were singing a moment ago. The Bible says that he said, let, an, let the angel that led me, let the angel that led me, everybody say, let the angel, let the angel that led me, that led me, let it be upon Ephraim and Manasseh. So what I'm praying right now is an angel, an angel be upon every student, every child that walked across here. An angel be upon every teacher, upon every administrator, upon every school. Now I'm gonna ask all of you teenagers and college students, I'm gonna ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to be a Spartan. I'm gonna ask you to be a warrior. I'm gonna ask you to be an Olympic. I'm gonna ask you to do something that most of your peers nationwide and around the world does not do. This will make you an outstanding person. I'd like for all of you, your school, I don't know what school you go to, but I want you to go and lay your hand on the building. You don't have to go inside. To tell the principal, just lay your hand on the building. And I want you to pray th three prayers. And I'm commissioning the whole church. We had 917 schools last year that we prayed for. Now, students and all of you, all of you young men and all of you young ladies, this is going to be big stuff. This is going to be captain, lieutenant, general stuff. This is going to be... It's going to be huge in the kingdom, all of you, all of you incredible students. What I want you to do is lay your hand on your school. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray three prayers. I want you to say, just simply say, Lord Jesus, no shootings in my school. No shooters come to this school. No bullets in this school. Then I want you to pray the second prayer. Lord, let angels be in my school to protect my school. Then the third prayer is, Lord, touch every student that's in this school and touch every teacher and principal. That's all, three things. That's three prayers. Very simple. Then I want you, all of you students, I want you to go on our website. We have a place where you can put the name of your school and address or turn it into the receptionist. Then I'm going to take your school, your name, make sure we have the address, and I'm going to write a letter to your principal. I'm going to tell them you prayed for the school. I'm going to tell them we prayed for the school. I'm going to tell them that we prayed three things, no shooters. We pray that there would be angels in that school. We pray that the students would be touched and the teachers, all of you, I want you to do that. I'm requesting the Community of Family Christian Center to do that. Sunday, I'm going to make the announcement. And all of us find a school. Now, some of you may go to the same school. Doesn't, marry, doesn't matter if it's Marian Catholic. Doesn't matter if it's, if, it's, if it's a public school or a charter school. Doesn't matter. I just want you to do that. Turn it in to me. Turn, they'll get it to me. And I'm going to write a letter. I'm going to tell that school you go to, that school you pray for. And regardless, listen to me, students, if you don't go to that school and you feel like, I want to pray for that school because I want to get it on the list, then turn that school in, whether it's your school or not. But you are going to be highly anointed. Amen. You are highly anointed. No bullet, no raping, no rape. And in the name of Jesus, I come against drug dealers. I come against anyone that would take advantage of you. You precious, you young ladies, you're precious. You're, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. And I rebuke any 
any sex molestation. I rebuke, I rebuke girl on girl. Some girl come up to a girl and say, I want to have sex with you. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. If a young man comes to another young man and says, I want to have sex with you, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And I want to tell all of you, look at me. I know who you are. I know who you are. You're a girl. You're a young man. I can tell the difference. You are all young men. You are all young ladies. And all of you, listen, listen. Anybody can have babies. Anybody can have sex. Anybody. Anybody can do that. Anybody can shoot somebody. Anybody can kill somebody. Anybody can do that. All of you big enough. You know. Don't look at me like, oh, I can't believe you would say, yeah, come on, come on. You know what I'm talking about. Let me tell you something. I love what Barry Gibbs said of the Bee Gees. He, and most of you know, you know, he wrote Staying Alive and a lot of music. He's still producing. He produces even for Justin and produces uh, for even a lot of people that you know about and read about today. But he was asked, how come your brothers are dead? He said, because they went to parties and they, they would go and drug after big concerts of 100,000 people. And my brothers would tell me, come on, Barry, let's go drug. Let's go party. Let's go eat. Barry said, no, I'm not going. And he said, I never went. And the question was asked, Barry, why didn't you go and party? You're so popular. Look at all the money. Look at all the thousands of people. And he said, I went to my motel room because I had a gift. I had to protect. I had a gift. I had a gift. He said, my brothers, my brothers are dead. They're in the ground yeah. because they got drug addicted. They got alcohol addicted. They got in trouble. They got in trouble. Let me tell all of you, you're world changers. You're incredible teenagers. And let me tell you something. You come to this church, let me tell you something. You're going to be phenomenal. Now, you're not perfect. I know you're not perfect. I'm looking at some of you guys. I know you're not perfect. I'm looking at some of you girls, and I know you're not perfect. But you know what? For you to be here tonight and say, pray for me, that's big stuff. That makes the devil mad. And I'm proud of you. Because everybody, anybody can cuss. Anybody can do drugs. Anybody can vape. Anybody can take the clothes off. Anybody can do that. But I look at you, and I see champions saying, I want to be blessed. I want to do something good with my life. I want to, I don't want to be like everybody else. So in closing, in closing, we're going to go outside. We're going to have a blast. I want to tell all the parents and everybody watching me, thank to, thanks to Quest. Quest is, get, everybody should get your kids involved in Quest. It's a program we have every week. Quest, since May of this year, has been donating money to teachers and different people. So tonight, we are giving backpacks out to all students. We've bought them. They're going to be given out in the parking lot. And you get pencils and you get notebooks, etc., for school of 2023. That's what we're doing tonight. Now, if we should run out of backpacks, Rick Newell is donating all of the backpacks in the next few weeks. He's a little tight, but he's going to do it, he and I. He didn't know I was going to do that, but it's too bad now. God will bless him. He's a rich man. God will bless him. So if you should, if we run out of backpacks, don't fear, because we're, we're going to bless you. We're going to make sure you have one, okay? Because we love you. I want to look at you. I want to look at you. I want to look at all of you. I'm so proud of you. All of you. You look so great. You look so precious. Love you. Love you. Now, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have anointed our children. 
anointed our teenagers, anointed our college students, anointed our parents. And God, it's going to be a safe and it's going to be a good year. Yes. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. All right, let's go outside and have fun. Let's go right out there. I love watching all of the students as they were being anointed, as we believe in God, that God is going to touch every student. Now, we are now tonight officially, for the next four weeks, we are praying for schools. I need your help. Every one of you watching, there is a school near you, maybe a grade school, maybe a high school, it may even be a daycare, or it may be a college. But there is a school near you. Here's what I would like for you to do. I would like for you to give us the name of that school. I would also like for you to take it upon yourself, if you haven't anointed it, to go to the school. Lay your hand upon the building, somewhere on the building, and pray three things. One, that there would be no shootings, there would be no violence of of shooters that would come into school. Number two, that angels would occupy. Lord, let angels occupy the doors, the hallways, uh, the fields, any part of that school. And number three, you would pray that every student would be touched by the Holy Spirit, protected going and coming from the school. I need your help. And soon as you get the name of the school, and I want you to take responsibility. I really want you to uh, really, really as an individual, a believer, to say, I'm going to do this. I promise you that that school will be protected by your prayer. What you then do is you give us the name of the school, okay? And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to send them a letter and tell them you prayed or we prayed for that school. Now, last year we had 928 schools that we prayed for in the Chicagoland area, Illinois, Indiana. Let's break the record with 1,000. Did you know not one of those schools had any trouble? And what we prayed for came to pass. College, high schools, grade schools, and even daycares. Will you do that? The next four weeks, we are depending on you, you that are watching, you that are part of this Plea and call to pray for schools. I know God is going to answer your prayer, our prayer. Make sure that we get the name of that school in. You know, a week from Sunday is when we are going to do Indiana Jones with the Ark of the Covenant and the three secrets, three secrets, that are in the Ark of the Covenant. Three secrets you live by, three secrets that God wants us to have in our lives presently and shows us in the Ark of the Covenant. It's going to be a big illustrated sermon. It's going to be almost like a Broadway production. I'll be dressed up like Indiana Jones. There's going to be animals. There's going to be flying through the air. There's going to be all kinds of activities of illustrations on the big set of Family Christian Center. Invite someone. Come. Don't miss it. There'll be four performances. The first two performances are going to be the first part, and then there's going to be a second part. That will be a week from this Sunday. You don't want to miss that. And then as we continue the big Wednesday night getting prepared for atonement, as we begin to learn about what God is going to do in the last days. I'm excited about this Sunday. I'm excited about you that are participating. God is doing something miraculous. Something is going on. As we get closer to the Day of Atonement, which is the season and time that the Lord comes back, if the world should end, this is the season. Of course, we occupy, we believe, we continue to have vision. We don't stop. But this is the season in which the enemy rises and does many things to try to set us off mentally because of the great outpouring that God is going to do. Lots of great things are going to happen. So I am excited about the continuation of God's presence in your life. I pray that this big Wednesday night, as the anointing was flowing, coming through the camera, 
right there on your phone, right there on your television set, right there on your computer, that you felt the presence of God. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I believe this big Wednesday night is going to be a big experience of your presence into their lives. Thank you, O oh God, for healing. Thank you, O oh God, for delivering. Thank you, O oh God, for answering our prayers. And thank you, O oh God, because you are doing a work in that special person that's watching me right now. You have the opportunity to give just like we all gave. I hope you responded. We want you blessed. We know what Jesus says is true. Give, it shall be given. In fact, the Bible says it's better to give than to receive. And when you give, there's an activity of God's blessings in many ways, not just in money, but in many ways, health, favor, protection. So today, I hope that you have participated as we go forward in the kingdom. And remember, Friday is going to be prayer. Sunday is going to be great. I hope you're there. I hope you are attentive. It's going to be magnificent. And remember, yes, you can. Thank you.